Hey everyone, welcome back, it's Biggs. Now today, I want to discuss with you one of the most prized and cherished species of New World cichlids, or maybe more appropriately, Mesoamerican cichlids, that hails from the Rio Panuco Basin on the Atlantic Slope of Northeastern Mexico. A species that sadly, like many, is in trouble. As we shall discuss, it faces insurmountable challenges in its home range, and its long-term survival may very well rest on the shoulders of us, the passionate and dedicated aquarists, willing to do whatever it takes to maintain this striking, unique cichlid species. Behind me, this beautiful print is by a dear friend and highly esteemed artist, Mr. Nick LeFerrier. This print is entitled Mexican Standoff, and it showcases two of the very most important endemic cichlid species that are found sympatrically in the warm thermal springs of the Media Luna in the Rio Verde Valley. This being Nosferatu Bartoni and this being Nosferatu labor dance, the cherished gold labor dance. And the latter, Nosferatu labor dance, is the species we'll be discussing today. The Rixon's labor dance, the true yellow labor dance. It's a, and what's, what's great about the fish is the fact that it's very colorful, in terms of lemon yellow and black black mm -hmm. when it breeds. And uh, they're great parents, and they live in, at Media Luna, it's a spring, in the middle, basically, of the desert, kind of north central Mexico. And someone, there's a canal that they use for irrigation. Someone introduced Carpenta, or the Carpenta swam up from the river, from the Rio Verde, and invaded the lagoon, started hybridizing with the, with the yellow rabbits. And early on, back 20 years ago, you could see it happening. You could see more hybrids every trip. And they have a distinct look to them. Yes, and, and, but the problem was most of the collectors that went and caught any fish, they were like only 70% labyrinths, maybe 80%. So they looked like labyrinths, but they, were, they had carpenta mixed in with them because it was a, you know, like a female that was a hybrid was breeding with a pure labyrinth. Yeah. And so their fry looked good for a while, but then they would get a foot long and people would realize that they're not what they were. Yeah. So we were lucky enough to eventually get some long, long ago that were pure and we brought them back and, and bred them and now you know, many people enjoy the fish. Well, there's, cer there's certain things that are a little bit unique about them is they need to be a lot warmer yep. and they need to be they fed a little bit different than any other. And that's why a lot of people don't have success with them. Yeah, you have to be sparing on your food Keep in mind they eat snails primarily in, in nature, and uh, yeah. which seems sounds like they'd be like you know a good weedy diet, but but they also graze a little bit. So uh, just be don't overfeed. Clean water because this spring they come from is crystal clear, flow fast flowing water, yeah. and beautiful environment. Very high in minerals and very warm. It took us a few years to figure out that you got to keep them at like 84 degrees there, very warm, like discus. They get them to be. Like almost everybody else, we get them up to that three inch phase, the three inch size, and then they'd always blow it up and die. Right. Yeah. yeah. Similar to like Bean Eye was another one. A lot of people yeah. failed with Bean Eye, the same reason. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, not, only, not only the threats of the hybridization has caused the problems for this species in the wild, but uh, most of their habitat's gone now, too, is it not? That's correct. They, yeah. At Media Luna, it used to be you just pull straight up to the, to the lagoon. It's like a desert lagoon out in the middle of nowhere. You just pull up there and you can get in the water. Today it's like a park. There's last time I was there, there must have been five thousand cars. <laughs> Everyone's in the river, <laughs> and they have pulled all the plants up, and their habitat's pretty much gone. Yeah, they've and they have pulled up all the plants and replaced it with sand because they you know they want sand. Yeah, they want it to be nice and <laughs> so. It, it, so the habitat's pretty much destroyed, and you just rare that you go to me and you find pure habitats today. Yeah. Now the good news is there are some satellite lagoons where they're doing fine, like Virgin, 
Yeah. Where there, no one's introduced the Penta, and it's not a park. Yet. Yet. We know it's bound to happen eventually, well, but you know, yep, well, conservation doesn't seem to be a, a thing of priority in a lot of these third world exactly. countries. Yep. Unfortunately. First described back in 1903 as Heroes Labordans by the esteemed French ichthyologist Pellegrin. This wonderfully unique species has gone through numerous taxonomic changes. A year following its original description, Pellegrin revised the genus Cyclosoma, where it has somewhat had stayed until about 1983, when Dr. Sven Cullender obliterated Cyclosoma, leaving most of our treasured cichlids nameless. Fast forward to its new designate of Nosferatu, which plays homage to the species' unique dentition. The specific name Labordans is actually derived from the Latin word labrum, meaning upper lip, and dens, meaning tooth. As mentioned, its primary diet in the media luna is snails, of which it makes short work of with its strong malaliform crushing teeth on its pharyngeal plate, as well as its very strong jaw musculature. Now, if you can keep them to maturity, breeding them in captivity poses no real challenges. Pairs will breed on an exposed surface, a rock, clay pot, or a similar structure. The pair will be found guarding their eggs aggressively. And once the wigglers have hatched, the parents will transfer them to a small pre-dug pit in the substrate. To feed their offspring in the wild, pairs can be observed stirring up the organic detritus. And I have personally observed this behavior within the confines of an aquarium as well. Fascinating behaviors to witness firsthand. Now to witness this species absolute stunning bright canary yellow and velvety black breeding dress is truly a blessing. Watching them tend their fry as the loving and caring parents, even more so. So if you're able to, please give a tank, please give some care to this wonderful species, Nosferatu labradans. It definitely needs our help. So the sad reality is, is that if us, the aquarists, the chosen few, they're willing to take up the charge and maintain this beautiful species, I think the plight for this, this beautiful Mexican species is going to be rather grim. So with that, my friends, I thank you kindly for watching. I have to do a shout out. I have to thank my friends, Mr. Rusty Wessel in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, for his uh, audio commentary and a lot of the footage was shot at Rusty's house as well as my friends Kevin Acton in Saskatoon. The breeding videos that you saw were filmed in his aquarium uh, by myself. And, uh, and my friend Chris Taylor, who's gone on a few collecting trips down with Rusty as well. So thank you to my three friends for being able to help me put this video together. As always, my friends, take care. We'll see you next time.